Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and welcome to another episode of what I'm playing. Today I am playing the seminal sequel to the fantastic Metroidvania game of Guacamelee, Guacamelee 2. I'm playing this through the Xbox One via Game Pass, and this is a game that I've been meaning to play for quite some time. I never got a chance to pick up the sequel, and I was fortunate enough to find it via the Game Pass service. And thanks to that, I have the opportunity to experience a sequel and let you guys know what I think about it. Uh, so essentially, Guacamelee, being a indie Metroidvania style game, is actually a really well done series. There's a lot of really good platforming, combat exploration, and so on going on. Not to mention just some really solid humor. And the game just does a really good job of kind of piecing everything together. And I can't recommend the first game enough, but how is the second game? So the second game at first seemed to be more of a more of the same kind of approach, and that essentially is how it kind of starts off. You get a little bit of backstory about what's going on after the events of the first game. And I don't wanna, you know, get into spoiler territory or anything like that, of course, you know. But um, needless to say, you end up having to go back on your epic adventures as the luchador won and uh yeah that's not much else i can say about that so and right now i'm in the uh the chicken challenge areas and so essentially these are areas where you get new powers for your chicken power up because you can morph between a chicken and the luchador and they have their own move sets and all that good stuff. So it's a really cool little idea that they've got going on with that. Uh, but anyways, just to uh, kind of talk about some of the things here. Like, first of all, if you've played the original Guacamelee, I highly recommend you pick this game up. It's more of the same, and if you played the first game, that's a good thing. You know, you want more of the same in this kind of situation, so... You'll definitely be on board for that. But that being said, what if you've never played this series before? What are you going to think about it then? Now, that's a very good question because it all is going to be dependent on whether you like Metroidvania games or not. And I know a lot of people do. I tend to love them a lot and I play a lot of them as a result. But I know some people don't care about them quite as much because... There is a lot of backtracking and exploration that you have to do, and that's not anything different with this particular game. It's definitely something you're gonna have to contend with. But the game does it in a really tasteful manner. Uh, the way that everything progresses is just really brilliant and well done. And I just can't really recommend it enough, you know, for those kinds of people that really uh, want a rewarding and challenging experience. This game will definitely serve that up. Without a doubt. So, I want to get into an actual combat scenario so I can stop being the uh, chicken and kind of show you guys what's up with that here. So, let's go ahead and hop up here. Um, I'm, I'd say I'm probably about halfway through the game, roughly, uh, right now. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and just skip some of this stuff so you guys don't have to really pay attention to any story spoilers and whatever. But he's talking about Salvador, which is uh, the main, I, I suppose the main antagonist that you have of this game. Uh, Juan's new challenge. Uh, Calico was the challenge in the first game, obviously. And so, you know, that's one thing that they really did good. Uh, as far as as they offered the players a really good way to kind of continue the storyline and really add to the mythos that they provided because it was a little basic the first game but they really added a lot and i can see them having more potential games now uh just with the way that they did things you know because they really did them off pretty well <laughs> so i guess we're gonna have a ridiculous fight with a car like a nice little Street Fighter 2 homage. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Love it. This game's just loaded with classic references from games of old, and it, it's just a blast. It really is. I uh, really enjoy 
Well, first of all, one thing that I really appreciate about this game is it has a lot of rich, like, Mexican art and culture and all this other stuff going on. And I really have a fondness for that kind of stuff, you know. Whenever I took Spanish in um, high school, like, one of the things that really kept me interested, not so much was the Spanish, but just, like, learning about Mexican history and Mexican culture and all that stuff, you know. I was really into, like, the El Dia de los Muertos. That's basically their Halloween, you know, for anybody that's not educated about it. I, I really want to just one of these days just go to like one of those events you know because it seems like it'd be just a ton of fun but anyways uh, back to the game here so I, I just can't recommend it enough I really can't I'm sorry I don't have a lot to say about this game other than really good things because it really is a good game uh, if you dig Metroidvania this is one that you just gotta play honestly I mean it's a top-notch one it's by the numbers versus the first game, yes, but it does have some improvements. Um, they added some new abilities, of course, and like I said, they added a lot to the lore, which is also really neat. And it's just a solid game. I highly recommend it. If you got Game Pass, play it on there. I don't know if the first game's on there or not, uh, but you can get the first game pretty affordably. They also have, I believe they have a uh, physical... They include both the first and second games together, so you can kind of get like an all-in-one package. Um, and it's not like these games are super expensive, anyways. I think this one's like 20 bucks, and the first game's 15. So they're they're pretty affordable titles. So yeah, definitely check out uh, Guacamelee if you like these kinds of games. If you like Metroidvanias or just games in general where you can kind of explore around. And uh, just have some good times, you know, and not to mention this is like one of the only Metroidvania games I know of that actually allows you to do drop-in drop-on co-op Co-op <laughs> Co-op, you know, because that's really cool. Like Metroidvania games are usually just a solo experience And you can totally play the game this way. It's not like this game is gonna require you to play multiplayer But if you have any friends or family, you know, if you have any um, you know siblings or parents or uh, kids or whatever that uh, you want to possibly play the game with well you knock yourself out you know you can you can really enjoy it and I'd like to go back to one there so I can hit this there we go and what well, I one thing I'll have to admit I did get a little pissed off at the game because I did get stuck once uh, but it was completely my fault and I just really wasn't paying attention <laughs> to the game whenever it was telling me stuff that I could do. And so that's completely my fault. So my bad on that. But I am definitely enjoying this game and I'm gonna be seeing it through to the end. And uh, then I guess I'll move on to the next game. And you'll hear about it on the next time we do what I'm playing. So till then, down Phoenix out.